I wish I was a cabin boy aboard a man of war. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war. Pretty work, brave boys. Pretty work, I say. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war. Hi, I'm Samuel Siegel, Executive Director of the Schooner Pursuit Historical Society, and welcome back to Privateer Timeline of the Revolutionary War, Part 5. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what happened between February of 1781 and July of 1782. There's a lot of ground to cover in this particular episode, so let's get to it. February 7th, 1781. Benjamin Franklin asks all captains of armed vessels to allow ships en route to Dublin to pass unmolested so long as all their cargo is donated and not to be sold for profit. February 20th, 1781. Whaleboat Captains Hyler and Dickey take two whaleboats up the Raritan River and return with two prizes. May 21st, 1781, the Battle of Cape Split. Three privateers took on three British privateers in Nova Scotia. The British won the battle. October 5th, 1781. The privateer Revenge and two whaleboats, upon returning to Sandy Hook, took three prizes, one that ran aground accidentally at night on their way back and was stripped of all her cargo. One was raised, set afire, to avoid capture, and one that actually made it back to port. November 9th, 1781, the privateer Revenge sailed into the New York Narrows and took the British cargo ship Father's Desire. December 15th, 1781, Captain Hyler, in command of a flotilla comprising of eight whaleboats, captured two refugee sloops from famed Captain Shore Stevens. January 2nd, 1782. Privateer vessel Fair American, under new command, is captured by the HMS Garland. January 9th, 1782. Captain Hyler's flotilla destroys elements from the 40th and 42nd Regiment of Foot and several refugees that were on a raid to capture Captain Hyler. March 20th, 1782. The Huddy Affair. Lieutenant Roberts and Loyalist Bucks County, Pennsylvania Volunteers, depart on the Loyalist Brig Arrogant to capture Captain Huddy at Toms River, New Jersey. March 23, 1782. Lieutenant Roberts and his men destroys the fort and surrounding town at Toms River, New Jersey. Captain Huddy surrenders and is taken to New York to await trial. Captain Huddy was transferred under false pretenses. March 25, 1782. Captain Hyler captures Captain Shack of the 57th Regiment of Foot and seven of his men while en route down the Shrewberry River in New Jersey. April 8th, 
1782. The Battle of Delaware Bay. Three privateers protecting a small convoy of merchant ships that were entering the Delaware Bay came under attack by two Royal Navy ships and one Loyalist privateer. April 12th, 1782. Captain Huddy was wrongfully executed on charges for crimes he did not commit. This prompted a rather drastic but equal response from General Washington. A Captain Asgill was chosen to stand in as collateral. April 24th, 1782. Connecticut Governor Trumbull appeals to Congress for the authority to suspend privateer commissions in cases of misconduct. May 21st, 1782. Congress passes Governor Trumbull's resolution authorizing executives in several states the authority to suspend privateer commissions in some cases. May 28, 1782, the Battle of Halifax. The privateer vessel Jack was captured in battle by the HMS Observer. June 1, 1782. Refugee Captain Davenport, along with 80 men, raided the salt works belonging to Samuel Brown in Forked River, New Jersey, and plundered the owner's property, then continued downriver and raided other salt works in that region. June 25th, 1782. Captain Hyler formally applies to New Jersey for a privateer commission for his new flagship, the Active. He is unable to come up with the required bond. July 1st, 1782. Three privateers raid and hold hostage the town of Reed's Head Nova Scotia. The raiders captured several town officials and two British officers. They were all held for the ransom of 1,000 pound. There is a series of books called The Packet. In book one on page four, you will find the recipe for biscuits. This is what we use at the SPHS. And we are constantly having reenactors from Crown Forces come and steal them away. So to make a fair amount for basically one batch of biscuits, you are going to have to use unbleached all-purpose flour or unbe unbleached flour in general. Um, you are going to need two cups of it. You are going to need a half tablespoon of salt. I prefer to use the coarse kosher salt because too fine it, it ends up too much. Um, and a half a cup of water. You mix that all together um, in a bowl and then you take a rolling pin. You want to roll it out as much as possible. You don't want it super thin, but you want it to be, the recipe says, you want it to be 3 8 inch thick. Cut it and then punch 16 to 18 holes in it. Now. So as you can see, this is how they turn out. They are approximately three to three and a half inches 
this one's three and a quarter inches around. They do tend to shrink. I use an old cup measure that has its handle broken off, which is roughly three and a half inches, to then get into the dough. I twist it, and that provides the right shape for the biscuit. Then, once I have the dough, I place it on a cookie sheet, and then I put it in the oven at about 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I bake it till it's nice and dry, usually about 45 minutes to an hour. Bring them out, cool them, and repeat. And I want to thank you for joining me today for episode 5. The final episode, which will be the next installment, is six, and that deals with July of 1782 through January of 1784 at the end of the war. Thank you very much for joining me. See you next time. I wish I was a cabin boy aboard a man of war. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war. Pretty work, brave boys. Pretty work, I say. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war. I wish I was a gunner aboard a man of war. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war. Pretty work, brave boys. Pretty work, I say. Sam's gone away aboard a man of war.